When the F-16 first entered service back in 1978, it was not a record-setting jet. It wasn't faster or more powerful than other fighters. It couldn't fly higher or carry larger payloads either. But what the F-16 did do was completely revolutionize the way air combat is approached for the entire planet. And that's a big reason why today, more than 40 years later, F-16s are still the backbone of not just the U.S. Air Force, but the air forces of more than 20 other nations. What makes the F-16 so special? Let's talk about it. The F-16 program was born in many ways out of America's air warfare woes over Vietnam. But unlike the F-15 Eagle, which was a massive, powerful, and expensive aircraft, the F-16 embodied a new philosophy in air warfare. That philosophy would come to be known as the energy maneuverability theory. Now, this theory was born in large part from the lived experiences of fighter pilot John Boyd, who flew combat missions in his F-86 Sabre over Korea before moving on to become a prolific flight instructor at the Air Force's Fighter Weapons School. Now, Boyd was among the first to contend that air-to-air -air combat wasn't an art, but was rather a quantifiable science. And to simplify Boyd's theory maybe even a bit too much, he argued that in order to perform aerobatic maneuvers, you've got to trade either speed or altitude, which are represented as kinetic or potential energy. This is why you'll hear fighter pilots today say speed is life, because speed is the currency they exchange to perform an aerobatic maneuver. And the more of it you expend, the less you have left to perform follow-on maneuvers. So the more energy you can maintain throughout a fight, the more maneuverable you can be. And the aircraft with more sustained energy and more maneuverability usually has the advantage in a close quarters dogfight. Now, before long, Boyd was joined by other Air Force personnel, defense industry insiders, and a few defense analysts, and a group that eventually came to be known, somewhat affectionately, as the Fighter Mafia. In 1966, Boyd, who was a major in the Air Force at the time, and a handful of other members of the Fighter Mafia, penned a classified document breaking down this energy maneuverability theory. And they continued to champion the cause until 1972, when the Air Force finally agreed to kick off a new developmental effort predicated on the concept. Now, this effort ultimately produced not just the F-16, but also the F-A-18 Hornet, but arguably the F-16 best embodied its principles. And that was in no small part thanks to the advent of fly-by-wire control. Fly-by-wire control meant the pilot could pass off controlling the aircraft to a computer, basically just inputting what they want the jet to do and having the computer work out the best way to do it. Now that not only allowed for more efficiency in flight, but it allowed for the F-16 to be the first fighter in history to be designed as an inherently unstable aircraft. While previous fighters were designed to be stable and then expend energy in order to maneuver, the F-16 was designed to be unstable, using the computer to keep it level during regular flight, and then simply allowing it to revert to its naturally chaotic state during hard maneuvers. In other words, the F-16 was the first fighter designed to be at home performing high G maneuvers. In fact, it was one of, if not the first fighter in history, to be able to easily pull off 9G maneuvers while flying with a full combat load. Ultimately, the F-16 proved the fighter mafia right, emerging with the ability to perform a full 360 degree turn 11 seconds faster than an F-4 Phantom could. This small and agile fighter cost a fraction of what the F-15 Eagle did and could still stand and swing with the best jets on the planet. And today, there have been more than 4,500 F-16s delivered. It is the single most widely operated fighter on the planet, and it comes with a nearly unmatched air combat record of 76 wins and maybe one controversial loss that is often actually attributed to friendly fire. Not to mention an absolutely prolific career as an air-to-ground or attack-oriented multi-role fighter, flying more combat sorties than any other aircraft throughout Desert Storm, and in one instance a single F-16 even managed to dodge six surface-to-air missiles fired at it in rapid succession. And it wasn't until the pilot got back that he realized that his flares and chaff weren't working. He had straight up outflown six surface-to-air missiles, 
without any countermeasures to help. The F-16 Fighting Falcon would genuinely have a legitimate case to argue that it's the most prolific fighter of the latter half of the 20th century, if not for its big sister, the F-15 Eagle. But today, just like the F-15, F-16s are still in production. And the Block 70 F-16s being built today are the most capable Vipers ever. So while the F-15 may boast more records and truly more air-to-air -air kills, the F-16 is the platform that defined what multi-role fighters could be, and as such, remains the backbone of the U.S. Air Force to this very day.